Hello beginner remote controlled fixed wing airplane pilots. In this video, I will be teaching you how to fly the Carbon Cub S2 with the DXS and additional retractable flaps. What is an RC airplane? At the beginning, it might not be clear what an RC airplane is. RC stands for remote controlled and airplane is defined as a heavier than air aircraft that relies on wings to fly. The first step towards flying an RC airplane is to unbox the aircraft, making sure that all parts of the RC airplane that are in the manual are there. If any is missing, it's not too late to contact the RC airplane manufacturer and get the parts replaced. Before connecting the battery to the aircraft, a checklist should be followed to make sure that the aircraft is safe. The after unboxing checklist. Number one, throttle cut. Number two, flight controls free. Number three, propeller removed. Number four, battery connect. Number five, throttle cut off. Number six, throttle set 5%. Number seven, propeller and motor direction verify correct. Number eight, throttle set off. Number nine, throttle cut on. Number 10, servo horns, push rod adjust, control surfaces, uh, verify with wings, horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer. Number 11, control surfaces, verify flush with wings, horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizers. Note, propellers and motors should usually spin in a direction that produces wind towards the back of the RC airplane. RC airplanes has been assembled and ready to fly. There are some regulations then that an RC airplane pilot needs to comply with to be able to fly in the US. These laws were created by the Federal Aviation Administration or FAA, which is an entity in the United States of the of America governments that control the airspace over the United States of America. The laws are as follows. Number one, the aircraft is flown strictly for recreational purposes. Number two, the aircraft is operated in accordance with in the programming of a community-based organization's set safety guidelines that are developed in coordination with Federal Aviation Administration. Number three, the aircraft is flown within the visual line of sight of the person operating the aircraft, while visual observer co-located in a direct indirection communication with the operator. The aircraft, number four, the aircraft is operated in a manner that does not interfere with and gives way to any manned aircraft. Number five, in class B, class C, class D, airspaces, or within the lateral boundary of the surface air spaces of a class E, airspace designated for an airport, the operator obtains prior authorization from the administrator or designee before operating and complies with airspace restrictions and permission. Number six, in class G airspace, aircraft is flown from the surface to not more than 400 feet above ground level and complies with all airspace restrictions and prohibitions. Number seven, the operator has passed an aeronautical knowledge and safety test described in subsection G and maintains proof of the test passage to make available to the administrator or law enforcement upon request. Number eight, the aircraft is registered and marked in accordance with chapter 41 of this title and proof of registration is made available to the administrator or a designee of the administrator or law enforcement upon request. Note, registration. You must register as an RC airplane operator with the FAA and put your registration number on the outside of your aircraft. Registration costs $5 and is valid for three years. You do not need to register if your aircraft weighs less than 0.55 pounds to 150 grams. Safety guidelines. You must follow the safety guidelines of a community-based organization, CBO, such as the Academy of Model Aeronautics or AMA. These include flying within visual line of sight, giving way to manned aircraft flying below 400 feet in controlled airspace and avoid re uh, uh, restricted airspace. It's also a good idea to get a membership at AMA. This way you have more access to AMA fields. Recreational test. You must take a and pass the recreational UAS safety test or the trust test and carry proof of the test passage when flying. The test is free and available online. Airport notification. You must notify the airport operator or the air traffic controller if there is one when flying within five miles of an airport. You should also establish a mutually agreed upon operating procedure with them. These regulations must be followed, otherwise legal consequences may occur. I, the author, am speaking from experience. Some examples include trespassing to private territories to gain access to large flat fields, flying RC airplane next to a general aviation airport, 
and flying over a crowd of people. All these examples may cause harm to civilians on the ground or create legal consequences. Always follow the FAA's regulation and follow the AMA guidelines on flying RC airplanes. Looking for a spot to fly your RC airplane, you want to make sure you avoid airports. Every single airport is kind of like this. This is a air traffic control tower, which is located on every single airport. So if you see this, don't fly in fields near it. Here is a map of the national airspace system of Miami International Airport. You can see that around Miami there's a blue region. Underneath this region, RC airplanes are not allowed unless it's below a certain limit. For example, uh, at this, in, within this region, you are not allowed to fly RC planes at all because this is within five miles of the airport. Unless you contact Miami Control Tower, you are not allowed to fly. However, when you once you get out of that region, such as uh, this region, this region, or any of the regions farther away, a RC pilot is actually able to fly their RC airplane uh, while in that region. Here is a smaller airport. Uh, the radius here is five miles as well and while you're within this airspace you are st also not allowed to fly an RC airplane unless you get permission from the control tower same as this one uh, it's also very, uh, within five nautical mile or five miles of the airport you're not allowed to fly an RC airplane yeah here's a 3d view so you can see the height that the RC airplane is allowed to fly decreases as you as the uh, field gets closer. Well, this is actually ocean, but yeah. RC airplane is considered a drone or UAS unmanned aerial vehicle or uh, system. All UAS uh, RC airplanes must be remain below 400 feet above the ground level. So here's just another view. You can RC pilots are able to fly underneath here as long as it the RC airplane stays below 400 feet above ground. So here we are on the AMA website. Uh, it stands for Academy of Model Aeronautics. This website is one of the trusted websites for finding information on how to fly RC airplanes or just basic guidelines. Another useful thing about AMA is that you can fly flying clubs and fields. So all you need to do is just select uh, a city. Let's see, we, we'll just do Phoenix and then state. I don't live here, by the way, uh, Arizona. Say fixed wing because that's what we're flying. Has beginner remote controlled fixed wing RC pilots. Remote control pilots. Control pilot, yes and club level and this is just how pretty much how well done field is but let's find some fields and you see Arizona City Flyers we have multiple options and alternatively you can go to uh, maps.google.com and in here we are able to type in RC air fields near me and then I'll show you all the RC air fields um, yeah the most common type of control mode for an RC airplane is mode 2 as you can see we have two joysticks on the RC airplane these are what is known as the primary flight controls the airplane will be able to fly with just these however adding um, secondary flight controls will make flying easier the left stick is throttle yaw while the right stick is roll and pitch. So throttle rudder ailerons and these are known as the primary flight controls. RC airplanes or real airplanes there is sometimes 
secondary flight controls such as flaps, landing gear retract, or trim on a RC airplane on this uh, Carbon Cub S2 we have flaps extension and it's just assigned to one of the uh, three position switches on the remote control. Here is it in action. Extending the flap will help with increasing lift and slowing down the airplane's airspeed when coming in to land or take off. After the regulation and guidelines of the field you plan to fly at are complied with, it's time for takeoff. Takeoff can be challenging since the RC pilot's job is to maintain centerline. If centerline isn't maintained, the airplane will not be able to take off and it will possibly drive into the grass on the sides. Uh, this is known as veering off the runway and then it will lead to a walk of shame to pick up the RC airplanes again. One of the best ways to practice maintaining centerline is to do a high-speed taxi or do multiple of these high-speed taxis. Don't take off yet. Advance the throttle enough to the point when you're just about to lose center line. Reduce throttle and practice maintaining that center line. Once you have that down, follow the takeoff checklist and take off. After connecting to power checklist, throttle cut on, flight controls free and correct, lighting gears down, flaps set for takeoff, RC airplane pinned down, throttle cut off, throttle set full 5 seconds, for 5 seconds. Flight controls free and correct, throttle set to zero, taxi to runway center line. The RC pilot should uh, push the right stick down gently once the RC airplane has reached sufficient speed. This will lift the RC airplane off the ground. Be cautious of pulling up too fast. The RC airplane may stall if the pull up is too aggressive. After the takeoff has been complete, it's time to climb to a safe altitude so that if you lose engine power, you can still glide the RC airplane back. Cruise. Cruise is the phase of flight where RC airplane is not descending or ascending. Neither should it be preparing for takeoff or landing. During this phase, the main objective is to keep the RC aircraft in the air by either flying in circles or rectangular patterns. Some RC pilots could also do cobra maneuvers or cross patterns to keep the RC airplanes in the line of sight. RC pilots should trim the RC airplane so that it isn't difficult to fly. Trims are small adjustments of controls that make an RC airplane easy to fly. The trims are quite simple. There are, There is a small switch next to each of the primary control surfaces. The trims take in the same directional input as the joystick. The only difference is okay. they are so permanent and at much smaller increments. Trims can be used on the three controls as well. This includes throttle, rudder, and aileron. An RC pilot shouldn't be thinking about the controls. Instead, they should be focused uh, on keeping the RC airplanes within the flight area. This will prepare the RC pilot for later phases of flight such as precision flight and landing phase of flight. During cruise, it is important to keep track of the flight battery's current state of charge or the amount of time since takeoff. Some RC airplanes do not have telemetry systems to tell the pilot how much battery is remaining. Usually RC airplanes can stay airborne for 5 minutes. Later RC pilots should practice low approaches. This will help with landing later. I'm RC pilots should fly note fly that flying an RC airplane is a second yeah, person. Right. This means that the RC airplane just do not fly the same way okay. as a normal full-scale airplane does. Depending on where the RC airplane is related to the RC pilot controls and inputs on the RC airplane needs to be adjusted. The best way to fly an RC airplane is to imagine themselves inside the RC airplane and fly it using second person perspe uh, second perspective view of the aircraft and imagination of themselves inside the cockpit. The primary task of landing is maintaining the center line of the runway and keeping the wings level. This will make sure the RC airplane lands aligned with the runway without causing damage to the wingtips. The approach into land is just like approach during the cruise phase of flight. Except the RC airplane should uh, cut power once the RC airplane has crossed the runway threshold. 
When the RC airplane is a foot off the ground the RC pilot should gradually increase the back pressure on the right stick so that the RC airplane rounds out and lands softly. The following checklist should be completed before beginning a descent or approach to land. Before landing, throttle cut off, flaps set, landing configuration, landing gears down, aircraft state, stabilized on approach, throttle set as desired, and touch down. In conclusion, flying an RC airplane is a difficult task. Mastering it takes practice. The hardest part about flying an RC airplane is the landing phase. Don't become upset or angry when the RC airplane doesn't land softly. The takeoff and cruise phases of flight are easier since precise control is necessary. Flight time is limited. The RC pilot should practice flying as precisely as possible for landing training. Flying an RC airplane is subject to regulations created by the FAA. These regulations include staying below 400 feet altitude, staying 5 miles away from the airport, registering the RC airplane, and passing the recreational UAS test. AMA is a great place for general RC airplane guidelines and finding RC airfields to fly at. Follow the checklist and enjoy seeing the RC airplane lift into the skies. Oh, my God.